Hi folks, uh, welcome to one more uh, episode of uh, B.NET Witness to Hangout. As you all know, if you have been a regular, B.NET Witness to Hangout is an initiative from uh, Bangalore.NET user group where we bring in a speaker every Wednesday, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. while you're having your dinner. We give you a dose of technology and uh, this has been going on from last two, three months now. And then today we have with us Murugan. Um, he has close to 15 years of uh, you know IT experience. He's a uh, he has technical expertise in ASP Donor, MVC, Web API, C Sharp, and cloud computing. Murugan is also a community guy, and then is part of our B.NET uh, you know uh, family. So without much further ado, over to you, Murugan. All yours. Thank you, Lobut. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Murugan, and today we'll. We will build HTML apps with Knockout JS and MVVM. To start with, uh, let us look at the different design patterns that are available. I will be focusing on MVVM because Knockout is ideally, ideally an MVVM uh, implementation in JavaScript. Now, uh, MVVM uh, is derived from MVP design pattern and MVP pattern is derived from MVC pattern. MVC, as you know, is uh, one of the most common, commonly used design patterns. Uh, Visual Studio 2013 and Visual Studio 10 has an implementation for MVC pattern. MVC stands for Model View Controller. MV MVP stands for Model View Presenter. And MVVM stands for Model View View Model. Now, uh, most of you are familiar with MVC. So, M, um, M stands for model. Model takes care of the uh, business logic as well as it holds the data. View is basically uh, the display that you see. It holds visual aspects of UI and is, is mostly written in HTML, JavaScript, or jQuery. And if you see the three different patterns, you can see that the only thing that is changing is actually the controller in controller, the presenter, or the view model. The changes mainly uh, due to the uh, due to the relationship between the components. In model view controller pattern, model notifies the associated view and controller when there has been a change in state. The controller sends command to model to update the model state, and uh, view requests information from model and then render the output. If you have uh, build application in uh, in MVC, you understand that there is a model that you pass along with in, in the when you when you uh, pass it pass the model to the view and use the data within the model uh, to populate the to populate the view. Uh, MVP is a derivative of MVC and assumes the role of middleman, similar to the role played by controller in, in MVC. All presentation logic is pushed to the presenter. Here, the difference between MVC and MVP is that uh, view gets a direct uh, object of the model, whereas in MVP, the presenter, uh, the object is obtained through the presenter. Now, uh, for us, the focus is actually MVVM pattern. In MVVM pattern, the view model is more than view, and it handles most, if not all, the view views display logic. All these uh, patterns uh, provides a clean separation of concern. Again, MVVM is an architectural design pattern originated from Microsoft uh, and uh, largely based on the MVC pattern. Now we have already covered what uh, what MVVM is. Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of MVVM. In the main advantages, there is a clear separation of concern. It uh, reduces the amount of business logic and easier to unit test. Some of the, the disadvantages is that 
for simple UI, MVVM can be an overkill. It's hard to design view model upfront and hard to debug. And there is, a, of course, a little bit of learning curve. Now let us look at the top of JS. The underlying principles of uh, knockout is sep separation, clear separation of concern, separation between domain data, view components, and uh, data to be displayed, clearly defined layer of uh, specialized code to manage the relationship between the two components. And uh, the main, uh, main advantages are uh, the display is more responsive, richer user interface, automatic uh, sync. Automatic sync is when model changes, UI is automatically updated, and if you can if you can change the value in UI, the corresponding model also gets updated. That means uh, there is binding between the elements within the view and the model. Now, most of you are familiar with the save button. What happens when you save is you actually uh, run a validate validate uh, code that checks if, if things are in place b before you can click click a save. In this can be uh, easily implemented in in knockout JS. Here you can see that uh, there are these are the different set of things that need that uh, needs a value to be uh, for for the save button to be enabled. This this is easily implemented. Uh, in knockout JS because it uses an observer pattern. Uh, what, what it means is an observer keeps track of the different elements uh, in this one elements. And if one of the things is set to false, it notifies the save uh, obs observer uh, to tell that uh, and it disables or enables the uh, save button. Now let's look at some of a uh, little bit of code here. Uh, let's start with the hello world uh, knockout application. There are three different things that needs to be in place where before for the binding to happen. One is actually the element, one is the model, and the binding command. So let's start with uh, a small example. Just uh, get the HTML tags there. Hello world. I will use the H1 tag to bind the data. For now, I'll just put as temporary data. We need a uh, uh, CDN for knockout. Knockout is a standalone implementation. It does not need uh, jQuery. And let me create the model. View model here. First name. code is not running, it's still temp because I have not bound the data to the element. Data binding.
Now let us, uh, now what happens in this code is there are just three different uh, components that are needed for the binding to happen. One is actually the HTML element. The second thing is actually the view model. Uh, and the third thing is actually the uh, knockout binding, uh, this one. You can see that the binding happens. Let me see what this step. You need to provide the text colon first name. Uh, you need to tell what to bind to. Text. I think it's a value field. Data bind. Sorry, it's not binding. It's data bind. Yeah, I have a working sample here. Now let us look at the two-way binding in knockout. There is something called as observable. Now this is what we are going to do. We are going to have three elements. One is actually two input elements. Same view model we'll use. We'll just add uh, first name, last name. the data to the input fields. Last name. Is that key value? Label field will let's have something called as name, and we can change the value dynamically. Let me add full name here also, and later we can change that. Just demonstrate uh, what is actually computer observable. of function return model dot first name and uh, model dot last name. So 
just use the root. It's ready. Yeah, because I have not uh, provided the ko.computed here. It's not a string. Just use the code that is readily there. Just give me a minute, please.
The first name and last name should not be computed, I believe, because it should be just the observable. I'm sorry. These things are needs to be observable and I need a computer. Sorry. Okay. And you need the first name, last name, and the full name. My view model dot uh, full name is equal to your dot computer. Option of And I'll just return the first uh, the combination of first name and last name. Okay, and I will bind it to a label. A bind text. Needs to be first name. I need to get the value. In the space in between. All right. Uh, this is. This is what happens. It's an it's an observable. What observable does is it keeps a state of all the objects that are referring to it, and some when something changes, it notifies back. This is how the computer observable when something changed in the first name or last name, it notifies the full name, and uh, it is it triggers the uh, change in this one. We'll get back to the slides. Now let's look at the different uh, built-in bindings that are available. As you can see here that uh, we have used text and uh, value. Now there are other bindings that are available that HTML if you want to uh, display an HTML. Generally if you just display HTML as text you can see that the HTML tags are also visible. Style, attribute and different uh, bindings that are available are events that are click event, submit, value, enable, disable, as focus, checked, options. These are different uh, bindings available and and there are bindings that allow you to iterate through the data. That means if you have if you have an array of objects and if you want to display something, um, you have if if uh, sorry for each binding can be used for that or for width can be used. And uh, you will have blocks of text uh, block blocks. Say you have you need to display a div if some condition is satisfied. Or if not some condition is satisfied, you can use the if and if not binding for that. Then there is also something called as a template bound binding that provides the underlying uh, functionality. Um, Now uh, this is an example of an HTML template binding. Uh, here, what we are the output that we are expecting is this: the participant. Here is here are the participant and lists out list out the participant name and the amount of credits. I will just open the sample code.
Okay, this is what uh, the output is. Now let me just open it and I'll explain how it happens. Here you you are directly binding uh, the value from this model. Here the, this is the template script uh, template name template ID is person template and uh, it it value displays the name and it displays uh, the credits followed by the credit string. Now uh, there are two values that are uh, rendered. That is one is of the buy and one is actually for the seller. Here in 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 template binding, uh, you you have the name. That is actually the person template. We are using the same template to bind uh, both the buyer and seller. Then here is an example of. Uh, binding using for each loop the same thing Hey Morgan, can you increase your font a little bit, maybe to 150%? Yeah. Visible? No, I was talking with the code. Yeah. Can you see it now? Uh, Visual Studio. Visual Studio, sure. Do I do that? Uh, uh, in the bottom window, you, you have the zoom percentage. Just, just uh, mm -hmm. left hand bottom. Just make it to one fifty percent. Now the advantage of template is you might uh, need to use the same piece of code in several locations. Probably you are having a grid and you want grid or say a um, say a small uh, small display area that you want to replicate in different locations. You can use this for 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 binding for that uh, or uh, the template binding. The template uh, binding is cleaner because uh, there is a lot lot more uh, code to use, but uh, the same can be done with for each, but you are you are putting the code in line. That is the difference. Now, uh, knockout has uh, something called as custom binding. You have earlier seen that we have different types of binding called value, text, uh, HTML, etc. But if you want to have your own uh, binding. Uh, uh, you can use your use uh, something called as custom binding. Custom binding, it is easy to uh, easy to write. What you do is after you create your model, you add the custom binding code that is ko dot binding handlers dot. You can put your own name. It has two functions. One is actually the init function that that is executed just once, and you have uh, updated update function. Uh, this is uh, called when the binding is first applied to an element, or uh, it is called again when when if uh, this object is used by some other object and and uh, if sorry this object is using some other object and if that object changes, this uh, this uh, update function is called again. Now let's look at a small example for this. Just open this in Visual Studio. First, let me uh, run and show you the code. Okay, here it is. It is the same code that uh, 
I had used earlier, the first name, last name. And the only difference is uh, here, you can see that uh, the planet is actually from, 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 the, from the data that is present here. And hello is, is added by my, by my init. So you can see the code here, ko.bindinghandler.mybinding. Here, the only thing that I'm using is I'm retrieving the value uh, from uh, passed from my from my element. All right, let me explain the code one, one by one. Here I have the uh, first name. Here I'm using my custom bind handler. Then I have the last name. I'm using the value handler and uh, uh, hello where I'm using the text handler. What I'm trying to do is uh, in the hello, uh, I will I will be adding the first name and last name just like earlier. But the different different thing is the first name uh, is execute is run through a custom handler. This binding is executed through my custom handler. And in my custom handler, what I'm doing is whatever the name is passed, I'm adding a hello to it. So here you can see that uh, this is my model. Uh, first, here I'm passing the value as I'm initializing. That is, I'm, I'm passing planet and Earth. So the first name uh, gets initialized to planet and last name gets initialized to uh, Earth. And the full name is actually a computer observable. And what it does is it returns just the first name and last name. Uh, keep in mind that I don't have a hello written anywhere here. So it is in my custom binding handler where, uh, where in, the, in the init, what I'm doing is I am, I am extracting the value. Unwrap observable is used uh, because used in places where you don't know whether it is actually the observable object or is it actually the actual value value that you are getting. Sometimes uh, the difference is in the first code I did not uh, initialize the first name as a ko observable. I was giving the direct value. So in in that case it is safer to use ko dot util dot unobservable if you are not sure whether it is actually the object or the value that is being passed. Now, in this case, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just applying the binding, and what happens is uh, when when you when when this uh, when this particular piece of code uh, executes, my custom binder custom binding handler uh, gets triggered, and I'll just change this name to Rohit. I'll run the code again. Here, just keep in mind that the only only uh, only values I'm passing to the model are the planet and the Earth. So if I click on execute, you can see that the custom binding handler has uh, has inserted Lobit before planet. Now uh, these are useful uh, in scenarios where you want to write your own uh, piece of uh, you know your your own code. But probably you want to you want to uh, fade in or fade out something. So this is actually or uh, one scenario where you write is actually the text. Um, if you if you use the text or a value, um, what happens is for a date, the date is dis displayed as a long long uh, long string. Let me just show you from one of the projects I'm doing. So. Um, Date is actually a, a you know good uh, area where you can use this custom handler. Let me just uh, anyway, I'll just continue the slides. To display a grid, uh, generally, Knockout uses third-party implementation. And for this uh, demo, I'm using Kendo Grid. Uh, uh, 
there are one is actually the basic grid where you are just displaying the data and the other one is actually with uh, with 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 the uh, add add functionality Don't forget to add the CSS files if you're using no, using uh, using Kendo. Um, so the Kendo, other than the ink, the files that are adding, the code is pretty simple. You have a model. You bind it to a Kendo grid. I'll just run and show you that. As you can see, it is it is directly uh, binding the data from from the grid. The implementation is pretty uh, 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 simple. All you need to uh, do is get the value from 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 the uh, from from the web API, or we can populate the value uh, using arrays, and you can render it to a grid. One more thing that I would like to show is actually the Add edit uh, add add option. Here uh, you are you are doing nothing but adding a new uh, function called add. So when you click on add button, you are just adding one more uh, one more element to it. Item dot push. So basically, it's uh, this is this is an observable array. So you're, what you're doing is you're adding an element to an observable array. So I, one thing that I have uh, skipped was actually the observable array. Observable array is just like a regular array in Java. It has the same methods as uh, as as a regular array, like push uh, or uh, length, etc. The difference between an observable array and a regular array is mainly is uh, in an observable array, if you insert a new element, any of the uh, any of the objects that 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 are using this observable observable array will get notified. Now, one thing that you have to keep in mind is if the if if say if the Objects within the array changes. It, it it does not get notified. You need to have an you you need to declare those objects as observable for it to get for it to notify the observable array. Now let me just show you some code. Uh, let's close Visual Studio here. Yeah, this is actually an Ajax call, and uh, this is this is uh, something that I've mentioned that I'll show. Um, so basically, you have web APIs that uh, web APIs that runs on the server, and you make a Ajax call to it, and the return data is actually uh, is bound to the object. So this is actually the um, model mod, mod, model declaration. 
And here I have read, here I have an instance of the model. Here I'm creating an instance of, I'll just increase the size. Here I'm uh, creating an instance of the model. And uh, here I need an array to be populated. So I'm using a, uh, I'm using an observable array for that. And uh, and uh, this is where you make the Ajax call and you populate it. And if you want to save the objects, here I have uh, written the code for saving the objects. It is as simple as uh, calling a put method to the, this one. And what you do is to return to get the data from the observable. Uh, from the object, use a ko.mapping.toJSON. Uh, so it actually returns the JSON, and it is a JSON that is expected in the web API. So one more thing I wanted to show you was actually the date. See, uh, I have written a. Uh, if you, if you're, uh, the problem with date is the date is returned as a long string. It will have the time as well as the date. To to make it uh, presentable, you had to have a custom method called for format date, and uh, dates get formatted here. And one more thing that uh, I wanted to show you here was sometimes you need URLs. Uh, so in this data binding, what we can do is we can have a click function. Sometimes uh, in knockout, you you will have URLs that when you click on something, some, click on something, uh, it needs to be redirect to a different page with parameters. So in that, what you do is you give the href to the page it needs to be redirected, and this is a small function that. Uh, that add all the reference that uh, adds the parameters to it. I think I'm done with the demonstration. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Sorry for the mess up in the beginning. Uh, I I couldn't get that uh, get that error immediately. There is one question as of now. Um, one of the attendees is asking, like knockout JS is similar, like render JS and views JS. What is the uh, which is the efficient framework to work for building a dynamic apps and also do knockout support in um, SVG template rendering? SVG is actually uh, what what kind of format is that? I'm not familiar with that. SVG. Yeah. Um, well, uh, vector graphics. Or if you're online, who is asking the question? So basically, uh, SVG template rendering. Uh, the knockout has a as a simple concept of uh, you just create a script and then you give it a ID and then uh, that's a template for you. It's an HTML, uh, you know, boilerplate code and then you will just use that as a template in your data binding. So, it, so it doesn't stop you from putting an SVG code inside the template. So yes, it's. it's SVG is scalar vector graphics, so basically it uh, does not affect uh, if you're having an image tag, if you want to uh, put an SVG file on that, it definitely would work. Yeah, so you can always put the, the template is nothing but in a markup, so SVG is also kind of a markup, although it's an XML, but uh, to me it's like a markup, so you can put SVG code inside your template and then use it, but uh, coming to the other question, uh, I've not come across render.js or views.js, but uh, it's pretty tricky to uh, kind of answer which is the best framework to work for building a dynamic app. Um, well, there are plenty of things. Uh, or do you have anything to add? Like, you know, do you know anything on the render.js yeah. or views.js? There is AngularJS. There is uh, Kendo. No, no. What he's trying to ask is like, you know, I think uh, he's familiar yes. with uh, render.js and views.js. Yes. So, which yeah. is efficient framework to work like, you know, uh, 
that's what the question he is asking the popular ones are actually angular js and uh, kendo is actually picking up so it is sorry angular js and knockout um so kendo also supports uh, mvvm i am used to kendo and uh, knockout js so i will not be able to compare with the other two of them yeah when it comes to efficient framework it all depends on uh, the is light, i'm sorry knockout is lightweight and it does not need a jquery uh, to be available so if you are looking for a lightweight uh, framework that you need to add and moro one one thing about uh, knockout is uh, it, it can work with different frameworks like i had showed you shown you a code where we are using uh, using uh, kendo uh, K, sorry kendo a grid with uh, knockout so all these frameworks are uh, matter of uh, you know how you are comfortable with and if you're looking for lightweight i think that uh, knockout is a good option yeah so um my perspective here is like you know i think he has specifically mentioned render js and views js so uh, j- the first point to understand with knockout is you know knockout is not a view view controller or anything knockout is just pure data binding uh, whatever examples you have you guys have seen so far is all about uh kind of uh, data binding so if you're looking for explicit view management explicit uh, uh you know route management yeah knockout is not the uh, framework for that there are other frameworks like angular we are kendo kendo has a routing engine kendo has a mvvm engine kendo has a uh, you know uh, uh, data binding engine so uh, similarly angular has you know all the routing concept uh, mvvm uh, the binding concept the mvvm concept so those frameworks uh, give you complete uh, you know uh, things within their packages uh, i think render js is a separate api views js is a separate api so instead of using n number of apis and then um, you always will end up with a maintenance hell uh you can always go with a single package if you're looking for everything and mind you if you go with a single package if the size will be more for example angular will contain everything uh, if you just blindly go and then put angular so uh knockout is pretty good if you're not worried about views if you're not worried about route but you just want a data bind yes you can use knockout for data binding you know nobody writes the age old code about uh, you know i have a text box user types in a text box i want my model to be updated so i remember 5 years ago we used to do like uh, you know document that get element by id the text box id dot value and then create a javascript object so you don't have to do those kind of things now using knockout what you can do is just create a model model your form as an object and then just say hey the individual uh, controls of html like text box select radio button are all bound to my uh, property in my model and then if through code you change your property it gets reflected on the uh, the control if user type something in the control it gets reflected on the uh, javascript so that's why you know if you're not doing data binding get get and then start learning data binding in javascript and then you know start using frameworks like knockout so bottom line is knockout is majorly primarily used for data binding scenarios only if you have rendering if you have views uh, knockout is not the one so you got to start looking at you know there are plenty ember js uh, you know kendo also supports uh, uh, all the route views you know layouts Uh, all those things uh, angular js most popular even visual studio now uh, has intellisense support for angular so uh, you got to start looking at these things efficiency i think is got to do with uh, to me efficiency is all about uh, maintenance uh, all about speed all about how well i can modularize it so there are various aspects that you should look at the you know for me it's also ramping like you know if i am starting a new team and then i bring in the angular to everybody and nobody has learned angular how how uh, soon can they kind of uh, embrace it start using it and then you know those those are the things that you should kind of start looking at efficiency with uh, if, it, if it's efficiency is a factor so that's what i feel um that's the only question as of now uh let's see if we get any more no code is actually a uh, good if you are looking for a mvvm and if you are looking at uh, you know uh, looking to implement an observable pattern for your objects it is a very good framework 
And uh, I mean, I use Knockout uh, with uh, Kendo, and I think that it's a very good uh, combination to use. Lohit is actually a Kendo uh, expert, so he will be able to tell more about how this works with Ikiba. Uh, well, uh, it's basically, you know, um, there's no need to use Knockout if you're using Kendo as a package as or as a framework yeah, because uh, Kendo has an MEVM implementation out yes. of the box. Uh, but we understood like uh, you know people stick to their favorites so uh, we had to make sure that we work uh, with the other frameworks like you know I, I, I want to use Kendo as a UI technology but I want to use Knockout for my data binding so yes we support that binding concept where uh, whatever you saw Kendo grid colon items is nothing but that Kendo grid is a custom binding and uh, you know when we give uh, items to this binding, the binding goes ahead and then takes the div and then converts that div into a grid and then uh, data binds the items array that was passed to it and then uh, uh, that's how pretty much is there. So Kendo UI Labs is the place where uh, the Kendo knockout JavaScript is open source. You know, it's not that uh, the Kendo guys have written it but rather it's an open source where people contributed for that and then um, yeah so the Kendo UI labs is a good place to kind of take a look at that. Well I think we don't have any more questions so uh, unless you want to talk something on Knockout itself like you know who was the creator, uh, when was it done, uh, you know anything? Anything that you want to share? Uh, otherwise, we can call it a day. Knockout was, was an open source uh, project by Steve Sanderson, and uh, now Steve Sanderson works for Microsoft. And you can see a couple of videos, uh, videos uh, about with, that he has done. Um, these are really good videos that you can learn a lot about uh, Knockout. And uh, Steve Sanderson, along with a couple of people, right now maintain uh, maintain the knockout. The, the latest version is 3.0, and uh, Steve Sanderson tells that it's an open source, and uh, I mean he still works for Microsoft, but uh, he keeps maintaining that it's an open source project by him. So that's where it is. Okay, I don't see any more questions. I think um, we can end this hangout when this for this hangout so thank you very much for your time and uh, uh, those of you who are uh, watching it live thank you very much for joining this uh, web, uh, hangout and then those of you who are going to watch it later come back again next week uh, we'll have one more hangout with one more speaker so uh, I wish you all a very good night whoever you are uh, and then uh, we'll see you again next uh, Wednesday with one more speaker. Um, have a good day. Thank you.